Hey everyone, sorry for the delay in this video. We have been so busy uh, the last two weeks. Uh, I've done about three and a half thousand miles in the car, uh, up and down the country. Um, and it's it's been great, but very busy, very demanding. Securing the future of Carbon Arc, which is, which is awesome. And it's something that we're going to be able to get the, our community here involved with. Hopefully with some jobs, but uh, yeah, we'll have to wait a little bit before I can really talk about that in detail. Um, but keep an eye on the space. We've also been looking at ways to improve the way in which we can share these practical samples. Um, I'll probably release a YouTube short around this because we're taking scans of them for us to be able to pick out the defects and the likes a little bit better so we can talk through defect types and, and what they are. So again, have keep an eye out for that one. But without further ado, let's have a look at uh, some WPS questions. So with all of these multiple choice questions, we're gonna have a part one and then a second part of the question. So you'll see we'll have 1A, 1B, uh, sorry, 1, 1A, 2, 2A, and so on. So I've pulled together 12 questions in total here for the round WPSs and these sit very much on the same level as your WPS questions in the third part of your new examination. So as we've discussed before for the new CSWIP exam you will do a general multi-choice of 80 questions. Eight of these samples where you do the face and the root of the world and then you will look at some WPSs and answer some questions around them. So we'll get it's just look at this like general questions where they're using the WPS to drive that so it's specific but I really don't think they're any different to the questions which used to be in the old te te technology paper. Um, but yeah, let's have a look. So first question here. The purpose for a WPS and PQR is determine that the welder is qualified, the base materials are strong, the weldman has desired properties, the skill of the welder. So what do we think this one is? All right. um, for this, WPSs and PQRs are always looking at mechanical properties. So you could look at this and go, well, it's all going to be between uh, B and C. Now, B says strong, so indicates tensile strength, which is good. But we're not just looking for tensile strength. Mainly tensiles and ductility, if you're looking at ASME 9 for bends and tensiles. Or uh, desired properties, something like 15614 is very in-depth for this, where we do bends tensiles so that's our ductility and our strength sharp impact testing for our low temperature toughness uh, you do some hardnesses to get the hardness levels to see if it's brittle or not you know so it's uh it's got it's got a few things there so the best answer here is c the weldman has a desired properties so this is the weld heat affected zone and weld metal so our second question, as you can see here, with reference to the previous question, what tests could be used to show a quantitative measure meant to prove this? Okay, so we're looking for uh, something that's going to prove that the world has its desired properties. So an x-ray, no, it's looking for defects, tensile strength, Bend test and fractures are mechanical tests, but bend test and, and defracture tests are qualitative. So we're looking for a quantitative measure. So yeah, so I would go tensile test for that one. And see, so we're in WPS questions, but you can see how it's gonna it's gonna look at the whole technology and all the knowledge around WPSs as well. Question two. The qualification range of a welding procedure in accordance with ASME 9 is limited to that of the qualification test, 
not essential variable, therefore could be anything in production, can only be vertical up progression, depending on the MMA electrode being used. So in general, of course, a qualification range for a procedure test is based on what you've done and then any ranges outside of that. Some are essential, some are non-essential. So if we look at essential, non-essential, and supplementary essential, we have essential. If you change it, then you must requalify. Non-essential, do whatever you want. And then supplementary essential in ASME 9, and only in ASME 9, um, is only applicable if we've got impact toughnesses. So if we're looking at working at low temperature. So the range of qualification is limited to that of the qualification test, but those limits are going to be based upon essential and non-essential variables. With reference to the previous question, is the same? Is this the same for a welder qualification? Well, the answer is yes, but we'll have a different range of um, essentials and non-essentials. In ASME 9, the essentials for PQRs is quite a big table, but the essentials for welder calls is, is really quite small. Welding procedure WPQR1 states that the post-weld heat treatment temperature used was 1200 degrees. What heat treatment is this likely to be? So in your exam, you'll be given a range of documents. So you'll go and you'll find WPQR. 001 or whatever number they've given you so here we've got a WPQR brought up and we can see here it's got the post well heat treat is 1200 degrees okay you can instantly see here that in most of the questions the WPS is just a way of focusing you yeah you don't have to work really a lot out this is still general knowledge stuff so if we know that a 1200 degree post well heat treat is a solution heat treat, right? So post well heat treatment in the sense is anything above 400, normally a, a hydrogen release, post weld hydrogen treatment. Um, we've got stress relief, anything above 600 degrees. Normalizing, getting it up to 900 degrees. So normalizing and annealing occur at 900. And then our solution heat treat for stainless steels being at um, 1200 degrees. So what temperature does heat treatment need to be to affect a change on the grain structure? So if you had a look at our video on the um, time tra temperature transformation graph, I'll stick it here or in, in a link below, uh, we know that we have to be above the critical transformation temperature. So for a carbon steel, that would be around 720, 723 degrees. Yeah. If it's below that, we won't get a change. It's fairly safe. We can do our stress releases in the ring. But once we get above the critical transformation temperature, we run the risk of producing non-desired grain structures as we cool. Which of the following is the correct European standard for the Tesla WPQR001? So here we've got our WPS section, and you can see in this part, we don't have a stated value. So in accordance with a European standard, the best answer here would be ISO 15614. Um, you can see actually on, on our thing there, we've got a group number of eight. So the subgroup of that would be ISO 15614-1. Um, but ISO 5817 is for qualification acceptance criteria, uh, production acceptance criteria as well. Uh, ISO 22553 is for our drone symbols. And 9606 is for welder qualification. With regards to the previous question, which welder qualification standard would be used in partnership with the standard above? 
So if we're using 15614 to qualify our procedures, we're using ISO 9606 to qualify our uh, welder. Yeah, brought these two up together, but what would cause an increase in hardness levels when working to the variables in WPS002? Okay. Does it matter what they are? No, so I haven't brought it up here, but here we're just saying, if you're using your amps, your volts, your travel speed, in your heat inputs, what is going to drive up hardness levels? So this would be fast cooling. Yeah. And with regards to the previous question, what type of grain structure would show high, higher levels of hardness? So here we've got ferrite and perlite are generally quite low. Bainite is a bit higher, naturally occurs in our heat affected zones. And then martensite is our non desired uh, grain structures in carbon steel welds because it's generally quite hard and has a hardness value above 400 hardness figures. So something like 15614 uh, puts a max hardness value of normal non non all at steels of uh, 380 HV, you know, to keep you away from monocytic grains. WPS02 states that the maximum weld bead width shall be 10 millimeters when welding carbon manganese steel. If the weld width is exceeded, this may cause. So can we can look at our WPS. So here we've got a little statement there saying weld bead shall be a max of 10 mil. So if we go wider, why would we go wider? So this would be either we slow down so the weld can grow out more, that's one. Maybe we start putting a, a larger weave onto, uh, onto the weld. But both of those are gonna slow our travel speed and are gonna up the heat input, which is gonna lead to slower cooling, yeah? Now, if that occurs and we have slower cooling, we can answer the second question, which says, with regards to the previous question, what type of grain structure might this produce? So here we've got you know, a small grain structure with low toughness. That's not right. Uh, it's, it's normally a small grain structure with a high hardness. And then you've got the opposite here, a large grain structure with a high hardness, no. So the best answer here would be a slow cooling rate is going to produce a larger grain structure with low toughness yeah. so there we have it some fairly quick WPS questions built as leading questions as well which help us with our 80 general choice but there's nothing to be worried about with the WPS questions okay they're just general and technology questions from the old exams built into a framework that says these are specifically about WPSs, their variables, how we use them, what they are. Okay, um, There is a couple of heat input questions in there sometimes, we'll do some more of them in the future, but with that, I hope, you know, next time we'll get a, a videos out a little bit quicker. I've, I've got a couple of weeks where I'm, I'm relatively relaxed, so we'll have a go. Uh, but in the meantime, good luck with your studies and we'll see you in the next one.